Quite recently I wrote an article about 80s fonts and design. I have to say this subject is quite fascinating. I spent hours and hours browsing through movie posters, video games, music album covers and other design samples of the 80s, mainly focusing on typography of the 80s and fonts of the 80s. Wherever possible I searched for download sources for the 80s fonts I identified or at least some close matches and I even tried my hand at recreating some of the most notable designs and typography from that time. Let's take a brief look at my findings. If you want to read the full article, check out the link in the description below. One characteristic of the 80s was the obsession with the future. Probably that's why out of the 80s came some of the most emblematic sci-fi movies. Back to the Future, Blade Runner, Tron, Aliens are all sci-fi classics that came out during the 80s. Digital typefaces back then were scarce and limited, so most of the movie posters of the time used hand-drawn typography that rendered the style of the movie. The 80s was also the decade when the movies Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back and Star Trek IV were released. All these movies have a huge number of fans, so it's no wonder that I could find t phones for all of them. Just for fun, I remade the text effects and typography from these 80s movie posters and you can download the PSD file containing the text effects using the link in the description below. An electronics revolution was in full motion during the 80s. One huge role in its success were video games. Game consoles and later personal computers were not that powerful back then, so you have to hand it to the ingenuity of programmers to make the best of the low resolution and limited number of colors available. Games like Pac-Man, Tetris, Super Mario and Prince of Persia in the late 80s are all considered video game classics now. I found the typefaces for all these games and put them in my article. For Prince of Persia, I even got in touch with Jordan Magner, the creator of the game. He was kind enough to provide some information about the game and as it turns out the fonts in the game cover were hand-drawn. Using the Libra fonts I was able to make a close enough version of the cover. I looked at multiple book covers from the 80s and one font kept coming back again and again. It was the ITC Banguiat a font created for Adobe by Ed Bangriat in 1977. You might find the ITC Bangriat font quite familiar. Besides it being on most Stephen King books, it was also used for the title of the recent Netflix TV series Stranger Things. Album cover design has always been a fascinating art. During the 80s, most of the big bands had album covers designed by the famous English art group Hypnosis. They've done hundreds of album covers for famous artists like Pink Floyd, Black Sabbath, ACDC, Scorpions and many others. Led Zeppelin's Coda album, for example, had a simple but beautiful typography on its cover. It used a font called Neon which was designed in 1978 by Bernard Allen and these fonts had each letter drawn from a single line which made it perfect for neon signs. At the start of the 80s, Pink Floyd's album The Wall was released and it became a hit for its music, its message but also for uh, the art around it. The cover was hand drawn but I was able to remake it by using a replacement font called, for obvious reasons, Floydian. Album covers are really a treasure for designers. Check out my article if you want to see more fantastic samples of 80s fonts. The main reason I wrote my article was that I kept bumping into modern retro design with 80s influence and I became immediately hooked. I wanted to find out more about it. What were the elements used and where did they come from? It's called synthwave or retrowave, or sometimes it's referred to as outrun. Nowadays, it's mostly associated with a specific type of retroelectronic music. This type of music was brought to the mainstream in force, especially by the soundtrack of the movie of 2011 called Drive. The soundtrack was made by a French musician named Kavinsky. 
The movie starring Ryan Gosling brought on waves of nostalgia, instantly clicking with the fans of the 80s aesthetics. One of those fans decided to make his own version of the movie poster in a specific retro style, using cyan and magenta, a reminder of old CGA graphics and overlaying VHS scan lines. The poster went viral on social media and its author struck a deal with the producer of the movie who adopted it as an official poster. Looking at many synthwave designs, I saw a pattern of elements used and I tried to understand where these designs drew their inspiration. Almost all synthwave designs had these elements. A chrome 80s font text, a laser grid, neon lights and text, and a characteristic striped orange sun, sometimes with palm tree silhouettes over it. Breaking down the synthwave design to its bare elements helped me when trying to track the source for each of them. The chrome text, which is usually the main focus point of the synthwave retrowave designs, is probably a reminder of the 70s and 80s obsession with robots, and more specifically chrome robots. The work of the Japanese 80s graphic artist Hajime Sorayama revolves around chrome robots and was probably one of the main influences for the chrome text in modern retrowave design. Sorayama made use of an airbrush for his designs, as many designers did at the time. This allowed him to have control of the chrome effect and it also gave a glow or bloom to his designs. This is also something you see in synthwave designs. Almost all modern retrowave designs I looked at contained a glowing laser grid in perspective. This most likely comes from early 3D computer graphics used in video games and sci-fi movies of the 80s. You can find the grid in Star Wars famous scene of Luke vs the Death Star, the movie Black Hole and Tron. The grid was also widely used in the 1980s on the cover of magazines, on promotional materials for electronics and video games. The 80s were bright, full of colors and they were shiny. A big part of the 80s culture were nightclubs. And what did all nightclubs have? Neons. Lots of neons. So it was only normal that the neon shapes and especially neon-like text made its way into modern retrowave design. Throughout the 70s and the 80s in the US, the surf culture was on the rise. The sun and palm trees were often seen on surf-related designs, both on the west and the east coast. I took a look at a couple of company logos from the 80s and there it was. The striped sun with palm trees. These symbols were probably adopted into the synthwave aesthetics because of the relation to the surfer culture and its rebellious nature. Check out my article for even more details and samples regarding the modern retrowave design. Hope you enjoyed this short video, push the thumbs up button if you did. I'm John from PSD Dude, catch you later.